The Team Never Quit podcast is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Now, when you refinance your auto loans from another lender, members could save and get $200. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Team Never Quit podcast. If you hear that sound that sounds like static, welcome to one of the big first summer rains. It's not even summer yet, but it feels like a big summer rain here in Texas. Spring rain? Is it spring? I'm pretty sure it is. Was it? We got April, April showers. showers. April showers. April showers. April yeah, yeah, that's flowers. it. That's it. We got it a says great... it in the rhyme. Dude. It says it. Come on, know the rhyme. <laughs> we actually got a chance to meet today's guest uh, on another podcast, Jimmy Rogers. I think you guys know Jimmy mm. from Boots for Troops. Oh yeah. Uh, and he was on their podcast, um, Sailor, Jimmy. Sailor Jimmy podcast. Yeah, Sailor. And we Jimmy. got a chance to meet Travis. And he is a retired Green Beret and founder and CEO of Alpha Elite Performance. He's got a lot of great stories to share with us today. Super excited for that. Travis, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah, All right, I got a again. TNQ Nation question of the day coming at you guys. What are you too old to do but still enjoy doing? Riding Supercross. Jesus. Riding 100 miles. Too old to do or too beat up? Those yeah, let's go yeah, either, that's either, 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 right? yeah. either or. Too old. Huh? Oh. I'm just gonna say working out. All right. I'm it's so work- monotonous working with dudes. What's that? So monotonous working out. You, Too you old to do, but you still love doing, like yeah. watching cartoons. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Not, uh, that's the first thing that popped in my head. I'll talk about that. Oh, still love. Doing. I was thinking of like an activity. It could be either. I was too, but I didn't want to jump out oh, like some punk. Kids, are you still working out. Cartoons? That's true. That's the best part about having kids. Good. Put on a He-Man marathon the other day. It was awesome. Uh, what well, do you got? I'm young. I mean, relatively. I don't too, think that's really an answer. Too old to do, but still enjoy doing. <laughs> like suck your thumb or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. Oh, you got a weird yeah. shit you want me here, man. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Still wear my hat backwards. Yeah. Yeah. I do as well, but I, I don't know why this one I feel like I need to have forward. You know, but Some of them do that, man. You saw you like didn't I, feel I got like a couple yeah. hats I can wear back. They just fit better backwards. Yeah, it's like a, like a helmet. You know what I'm talking about? I agree. Thing. I jumped a bike off a ramp the other day. Oh, yeah. You mean stuff like that? See, like, I don't know if I can still like, do that. Like I still do mountain biking. I watched stuff, Tony Hawk has a special out on TV. Still the wheels fall off, man. And watching him do those <laughs> oh, vert yeah, bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you guy's the man. Yeah. You guys are something. Oh, did you see the Nitro Circus thing yesterday or the Red Bull deal with the plane? No, but I talked yeah. to, I talked yeah. to yeah. Travis on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, made, yeah it was on Fox News. I mean, I had yeah. I saw it watch. I didn't get to see it. <laughs> that was uh, good? John said it's amazing. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they went up to those like, planes. So there's two pilots flying Red Bull planes, and they go into a dive, and they're going to change planes. <laughs> oh, like a, like a Batman? Them. So they, when they come out, everything's copacetic, and one of the planes goes into a spin. Well, the other pilot, he, he tracks and gets in his plane. He goes, I'm recovering, I'm recovering. The other guy's like, I ain't got it. I didn't make it. Uh, but the tail parachute popped. Here's the kicker, though. <laughs> so it's a Red Bull-sponsored stunt. And the FAA sent him a letter. was like, well, you do not have permission to do this. And they did it anyway. Yeah. Oh, shit. So that's that probably be a... No. That's how you know you got a lot no, of money. I was, I didn't... Yeah, right? That'll be all right. Don't well, mind the FAA. It's going to be even cooler now that they just broke the rules, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Is that where they're going with that? More publicity. No marketing is bad marketing. It's Red Bull. They'll be able to afford that fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they still say oh, they'll probably sell Gives more. You that's what you get upset yeah. about putting on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, great question. I got nothing. I got nothing for that one. Because you're young. I'm yeah. not old. I feel like I'm still you cool. Young person can't answer that question. Yeah, no. I'm sorry. It's all for you guys. <laughs> what, what about like trick parties? Would you go to a high school party? <laughs> no, that'd be weird. <laughs> you still go to a high school party? No, I don't think this. I don't Do you think secretly so. want to go to a high school? No, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> Do you secretly want to? It's a good oh, answer. Come on. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. I'm trying, just trying to help this guy out over here, man. He's struggling. <laughs> struggling today. You look like a crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, That's the best part, up, man, man, is having these guys around. Go tell me where you grew. Hey, where'd you? Tell, where, you said where'd you grow up again? Uh, Wichita Falls, it's Anchorage, right. Alaska. Right. Yeah, yeah, Texas. I was born in Texas, and uh, my father was a PJ. Uh, when the schoolhouse was at Shepherd Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, and uh, yeah. we ended up coming back to Wichita Falls at the end. Well, my parents did after I graduated high school in Alaska, 
and then I went to a military right. academy. And so back that up about your dad. I mean, that's a secret like society, man. Like <laughs> you think like most people hear the T seals and everything. Like yeah, we're we're small. They're not like y'all. There's not, not even a handful. The of y'all. PJs, yeah, they're a very small footprint. Yeah, even to this day. So um, he was Vietnam era. Did two tours in Vietnam. That's them guys especially. Yeah, it was with the, the uh, green feet dude, right? I yep, mean, that, yeah, had come a on tattooed now. on his ass. On his ass. A, yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah. a real thing. Matter of yeah. fact, they, they still give me. I got rescued by PJs, and they give me shit about it all the time if I've got my green feet. I'm not going to say whether I do or I don't. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. cop to that on a national he scale. He was but. Uh, in Pitts and Barger's class, the gentleman who got the middle of honor. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? I mean, yeah, just a small footprint. There, there were some bad ass. And that's ex- that's what I wanted to be was a PJ. But. Bro, I had eight or nine of them in my P- in my 18 Delta class. Yeah. A lot of them are dead now. You were a Delta yeah. too, right? No, I wasn't. I was actually an Echo, but I was a regular Army medic. Okay. Um, funny story, too. We got all kinds of stories, but I wanted to be a medic and... and uh, when I went through selection in 99, they told you what you were going to be. So when I went to the Q course, you're like, you're going to be a fucking echo. And I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. Was that during the, the special, the, the and Ranger Babies and when that, that special forces? 18 x-ray program. Yeah, yeah, the x-rays. Yeah. That was in 2000, right? It's, yeah, so it started, yeah, I believe so. I'm not sure. Not that was when I was, I was around for that. When it was started, George I Bush's I hear thing. y'all, y'all were pissed about it. It's kind of like the same time they pulled the Ranger Berets away from them and gave them the 80. Or the regular, or just regular oh yeah, everybody. the entire army, yeah, everybody, yeah. dude. Yeah, I didn't, that wasn't a good idea. And I've been out in, in a long time, like I'm an old man now, yeah. and I still say that wasn't a good idea. I, that was General Shincheski. Oh, I know who it was. Yeah, say his name. Yeah, it, I mean, bag, what dude. the hell was that about? <laughs> <laughs> good question, right? Holy crap, dude! He took the this 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 label of death dude. away from some death dealers and gave it to all of the fucking army. Man. I, mean, I didn't know what that was about. Probably because, because he didn't make it through selection. The guy had to have tried out, right? Dude. Yeah, yeah he, he was an officer, and he didn't have the Ranger tab, I don't think. You'll so. never hear me talk about, about anybody. I'm not even talking about I'm saying that shouldn't have happened. That belonged to them. That's how you knew them suckers. Yeah. And they are what they are. I mean, I've been, had my, yeah. you know, I've been saved by them plenty of times. Right. I'm kind of partial to them. But before they even rescued our asses, man, they shouldn't have. That was their shit, yeah. man. I, yeah. I'm sorry. That's well, one now of they're, they're giving out fucking braids to everybody. Uh, so now we have the SF advisors. Or, no, what are they called? Not SF advisors, just advisors or something. And they have a poop brown, a little darker than the... <laughs> the shit heads? Yeah, it's a poop <laughs> brown. You should look this shit up. It's are like you a, kidding me? I swear to God. You can't like the, make it up, right? It's like the color of this table that they're putting on their heads now. And they're called advisors. It, what they did do, they did take away a lot of that FID, um, you know, away from <laughs> like the soft element. So who, want, who wants to do foreign internal defense? Go out there and teach people how to shoot all the time, you know? So... They do a lot of that, but anyway, yeah, we, they shouldn't have taken. Well, that's because they shifted all of us over to, to what we do now. Yeah. So, but anyway, that was a what was the first original question? It was like, how where are you, you from? How were you when you went into the military? Yeah. So I actually went to a military academy. So I was right out of high school. Uh, Which one? Wentworth Military Academy, in Lexington, again? Missouri. Dude, that might be your nickname for around here, Podna. What's that? Wentworth. Wentworth. That's, that's brilliant. Was that what it's called? Yeah, Wentworth Military Academy. Just Stephen G. Wentworth. Uh, uh, looks like Thor, right? Coming through the door. With him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a big. He's a big. But guy. so I, I count that as my time in the army. Um, I went through basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I went to the military academy, contracted cadet, but I fucking hated it. I played football there, a little JUCO military academy, and. Uh, I hated it, and my dad was like, "Well, you're not fucking coming home, so do something." Was he hard like that? Yeah. Because PJs are cool dudes, man. How was that being a? If your dad's a cool guy, how is he was a, as a dad? Was he a hard ass? Because I'm I'm in that dad phase. Yeah. And I'm. It's he was a hard tough, ass when right? he needed to be. Oh, he was right. a fair, honest, you know, but you know, fiercely loyal to his core beliefs, and that was you're not gonna grow up and and quit. Yeah. Which I, I did a few times, and he let me know how he felt about that. So. Um, Part of growing up. Yeah, right, no shit. Uh, but yeah, so I, I joined the Army. I, I tried to become a PJ like my father with the Air Force. At that time, it was the Clinton administration, and I had knee, sur- yeah, knee surgery when I was 15, and uh, they were like, no. So I went across the hallway. The Air Force said no. So I went across the hallway, and the Army really? was like, yeah. The Army was like, we'll take you. Fuck. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, how, how can we help you? Big great money even more. You know, so. What can we do for you? Yeah. So, I went over the Army and uh, said, well, I want to jump out of planes. I want to be a medic. And uh, that was the closest I could be to a PJ because they jump out of planes, scuba, and do all that cool guy shit, and they're a medic as well. So. The, okay, so I didn't know about the PJs, like really know about them. Yeah. Because I wanted to be a medic too. Same thing. Uh-huh. The Rambo thing got into my head. I was like, what do you need to be on any operation, man? You want to be, they need a medic 
you know, they need yeah. the guy who's proficient at sniper school in college. So we growing up, man, I had that line up in my head. When I signed up, I was like, I want to be a medic. Yeah. It used to be at Fort Sam. The Delta course, yeah. The Delta course was. Yep. The yeah. day I signed up, they moved it to Bragg. To Nam. Vietnam, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to Bragg. Yeah. To Bragg. Vietnam is appropriate. Yeah. What's up? And um, <laughs> I didn't know that. It turned out it was the longest pipeline to be in to actually get to the SEAL teams. <laughs> right. I didn't know that. So I'm an Army bastard. I was with the Army for a while. Yeah. And uh, that's when I ran into PGs was at the was at the Delta course. Uh -huh. I didn't even know what they were. Right. And, and they kind of stuck. They were together. No one. They were kind of stiffened them out. Like, what the hell did they do, man? Yeah. They have badass rooms. Like they had leather chairs and TVs. And shit. Of course. It was freaking awesome, dude. Air Force, man. Air, Air Force, Force absolutely. Was freaking awesome. Yep. And yeah. then we're at the Army. We're all the green, greeny beans. And I was, I didn't have a tried. I, I was, you know, I was a seal pup. Yeah. Like, shit, dude. We had so much fun. There's Rangers in there across the board. We had a blast, dude. Yeah. Freaking blast. I man. bet. I bet. I'm but, not a medic. No. <laughs> right on. No, you're not. But you both were. <laughs> But you both ended up in Hawaii together, though, right? Yeah, yeah. we're always yeah. together. Yeah, like, we're in every team together. Every, we don't, oh, they always separate awesome. us for a little bit. That's like, awesome. Yeah, I actually remember listening to the podcast with uh, Dakota Meyer. Um, like you guys switched places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the one that named this place Valhalla when he rolled in that sign up there. He parked that up there. I, I saw that and I did. In my head, I was like, this "Looks like heaven." It's yep, beautiful. it is. You're in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> so the, we. Uh, the, the, the longest we were apart was probably a year. Nah, two. Was it? Uh, you know, they didn't. Not, we didn't keep separated by much. I, I'd bitch complain enough to where he, you know, he wanted to go do some other things. I was like, no, you know, I don't want to be out here by myself. <laughs> that kind of guilt trip. I was supposed to go team three. Yeah. Turned team out three or seven. He goes, nah, you come out to Hawaii. You come out to Hawaii. <laughs> Man. It's not go. a bad place to be. Though. No, no. Uh, we had, and then he had it every seal. We, we, uh, we got a lot of work done. Well, we're a Texas boy. The island fever set in. Yeah. I don't have anything bad to say about Hawaii because it took a long time for us to get respect there. Yeah. With the locals. How'd you but, get into? You burned in on jump. Yeah, I had a Elo, Arizona. Uh, That's it. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually I got a buddy who who total malfunction. He's he's got a cross out there. Uh, Brad Keys. He was, he was a stud, but what, 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 what year was that? When was that? Twenty. When was it? Twenty thirteen okay. is when he burned in out I there. Was we hear about y'all stuff you know. too. What's that? We hear about y'all too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sure. remember, and I was a huge Halo guy. I was on on a free fall team majority of my career, um, but my accident was in twenty ten, and uh, I was just coming out on final, talking to the boys on a little push to talk and stuff, and and uh, the right side. It was a night jump. Uh, no MVGs on this one. It was, we called it a night appreciation where you really had to pay attention to that fucking chem light on the, you know, where you're going out as a team. Anyway, I was coming down final and um, uh, all we can think of is that I hit like a night dust devil or something. Right side of my canopy collapsed. I was right below 500, so there's no pulling reserve. There's no really emergency procedures. It's just praying. And uh, that's what I did and just spun. Pretty fast, and next thing I knew, I was waking up with flashlights and fentanyl lollipop. Praise Jesus! Hey, thank you, thank Lord. God. For, <laughs> Man, when yeah, fentanyl lollipop is amazing. Yeah, uh, that. <laughs> wait, yeah, we'll go. They're lifesavers if they're used right. Yeah, I mean well, they, they they help. You know, you I, I remember feeling like I had, I, I thought that I had landed on like a fence post or something. My mind was just complete garbage at that time, and um, I was impaled. And uh, cactus? No, I was just. I broke my back, so it, it felt like I was impaled. Oh, okay, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah, uh, I had. I've done that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by what? Impaled by a fence? Yeah, that broke my back. Oh, Shit. oh. Hey, you yeah. got impaled by a fence too. Oh, that's true too. I, yes, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. Go. Go yeah, I won't forget I it. I was right so, behind you, bro. Hey, I'm we uh, we that. burned in. Get my that whole shit. stick burned in a Yuma. Oh, on the Hayho, and we were out in the middle of nowhere, bro. And our entire stick ended up in the ER, and I I slammed in full a wall arc jump. Yeah. Wall of a jump. And they put us out. We never even saw the DZ. Yeah. And we came into this, I mean, just right inside this ridge line with the fingers, the wings were just going everywhere. And I mean, guy, broken backs, dislocated shoulders. One guy landed in a Choya patch. Oof. Oh, yeah. Damn near, poor Damn near killed him. Yeah. So was, you guys just filled that, what was that Casa Grande Hospital? You just filled that hospital up down Is there. that the name of it? Yeah. That's Casa it, yeah. Grande, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which one was that? Been a lot, dude. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I got shipped up to the Phoenix one and, and lived in there for a couple of weeks before I went home. But it happens It happens often. Everybody thinks that jumping out of planes with the round shoots is more dangerous than free fall. Mm. But I knew far more dudes, especially night jumps, because you 
you know, half breaking that thing and you're just burying it into the ground. And, and I feel like we've all had the same surgeries or whatever. It's either shoulders, knees, ankles. Uh, you back. get to us one way or the other. You know, you know. And check, then, check, 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 check. Yeah, <laughs> and brain damage. So. Yeah, yeah. It's so. the issue that I think. Right. So that, did, they get, did, did you retire medically out of, out of the military? No, I, I ended up doing 21 years. Okay. Yeah. I, once I healed up, I went to another program That's called the RSE and uh, Regional Support Element. It was a handshake program out of D.C. Um, singleton operation deal. You had, a, you know, it, it, recruiting, ASO level three stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 I knew where you were going with that. Yeah. So. And now into self, but you started your supplement line while you're still in. I did. That's so when I got hurt, I thought I was going to get kicked out. And um, I was like, I need to fall back on something. So I actually started Caliber Nutrition, which was a, I was just going to sell other people's products. And uh, and then I turned that into Caliber Nutrition and Fitness. And I hired personal trainers and they, you know, I built out a gym. And then I built a bigger gym. And then I sold all that to start Alpha Elite Performance in, in my own supplement line and started with a product called Emperk. Uh, muscle performance endurance recovery complex everybody loves acronyms so i just thought i'd go oh, with that yeah, he's up. and uh three ingredients and dudes loved it and it's daily wrong deer antler a little green tea and some creatine to hydrate the muscles and i worked with a marine uh formulator in colorado springs at that time and and start pushing curious pills. when you start your own supplement line you like yeah, create yeah. something where you just like go to the store and buy a bunch of shit and add it together or no. like... <laughs> yeah right yeah I, I call that bathroom uh bathtub steroids and yeah. i saw a lot of dudes do that uh, so that's kind of one of the reasons why I got into my own product line. I wanted good, clean uh, supplements that are safe. And uh, no, the, you have to buy them um, from an ethically sourced vendor. Uh, a lot of people get them from China, though. Um, but you can get them from all over. Our, like our protein comes from Europe and also America as well. Organic, grass-fed. Um, but yeah. How come we don't have like is that it's farmed out on purpose? I get for money, right? But it would be, if it would be a lot healthier and, and if it was here, right? Everything was grown here for our. our all own. the ingredients. Well, yeah, yeah. a lot of the ingredients you can't get here. I mean, they're you know ginsengs and things like that. It's some crazy ass names of ingredients you know have to come. Yeah, from geographical overseas. dependent, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Check. So. Which is right now because the supply chain issues and shit is really difficult to get. So that's a real thing. Oh, it's massive. Yeah, even plastics as well. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> um, Thunder buddies. <laughs> yeah, even even plastics. I need to move. Well, I'm trying to get comfortable. Fucking dog laying on my feet. It smells like shit. <laughs> Stay happy. Stay happy. Right. <laughs> that's what it is. It's a tip. We'll cut, we'll cut that out. Because no, right. back in the day when we first started working out, back in the 1900s, towards the end of the 1900s, <laughs> you had uh, the, the supplement. I mean, it was it was, it was kind of, first of all, it didn't taste good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that was, was we would just muscle that. You had to have muscles just to muscle that down. I, yeah. really watched, I never did it back in them days. I remember watching him Man, and I him did. Scotty try to choke that shit down. I was a hard gainer. Like, I could not put weight on to save my life. Those yeah. Being twins, bro, I mean... I was happy being skinny. I, I, I had to learn, you know, trains run on rails, dynamite comes in small packages, all that crap. You skinny, skinny people say to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because a lot of people are like, oh, I need to lose weight. I don't like being big. We're like, well, there's another side of those guys too, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So when I you yeah. know, joined the military, I got in that government program. It all worked itself out. But yeah, there was a transition when it seemed like there was just an influx of of supplements. I mean, yeah. There was that period. I remember that. And there, remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember you know high school football taking cross tops, which was just pure DMAA. You know, it, what was that? Was it Fedra that we could get? Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up yeah. in the cap. What was that? Like a it was for weight loss. What was the name of that thing? There, there was a lot of them, but cross yeah. tops is what I'm talking. It's exactly that. Yeah. Um, one three dimethylene is what, and it has the word meth in it. So if that tells you, anything. yeah, there you go, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I remember you'd take three and four of those before you go play, you know, in a high school football game or whatever, and, and just be running all over the field, not fucking remembering plays and Dang. shit, you know. But um, yeah, th that was when it was pretty unregulated, um, and pro hormones were essentially legal steroids. They were steroids. I mean, there's people in jail right now that, you know, were putting substances in in these products as of late and got caught. Oh, we just heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's so anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, wanted, I, I, I wanted my own product line, a healthy, safe one. How do you go? I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, when people listen to our stories and what you have, because, like, when you drove, drove up, man, your rigs, I, I could see you come from a mile away. Yeah. 
Right, and to get from where we started, like just in the military wearing the green, and then going, man, I, I, I wanna do this. Everyone has one of those ideas. Yeah. Like all our boys do. This episode of the podcast presented to you by Black Buffalo, a tobacco alternative. When it comes to the veteran and first responder community, there is nothing like passing time with a good dip, maybe a vape, maybe a cigarette, maybe chewing tobacco. But for a lot of folks out there, you're looking for tobacco alternatives. You're looking for something else that you can do to maybe get that buzz you're looking for. Maybe you're trying to wean off altogether. And that is where products like Black Buffalo really excel. I have not chewed probably in over 10 years. When I used to be a firefighter, I chewed product. I dipped a little bit, but I just have it done in the last few years. And so when I heard about Black Buffalo as a tobacco alternative, I was like, you know what? I'm down to give it a try. Their flavor sounded amazing. Peach was one of the ones that kind of stood out to me. Blood Orange was another one that I was like, what is that going to be? And so when I got the products in, my little brother was staying over. He's an army veteran. I know that he dips. And I said, hey, I want you to try this. I did not tell him it was a tobacco alternative. I said, give this a go. Tell me what you think. Give me your initial reaction. And he said he loved it. He said that he got the buzz he was looking for. He said that the flavor was the best flavor he'd ever had in a dip ever, which he tried the peach, which I would have to agree. If I asked him to try it, I had to try it myself. Self, right? So I tried the peach, the blood orange. For me, blood orange flavor, absolutely phenomenal. Seriously, like if they made it out into a juice, I would drink the juice. It was just so good. If you're 21 or over and you dip or you chew tobacco, pouches or long cut, then you have to try a tobacco alternative black buffalo. Black buffalo is everything you love about dipping, including pharmaceutical grade nicotine, just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. It's dip literally made from edible green leaves and food grade ingredients with the same flavors and textures as traditional tobacco products with no compromise. Now, Black Buffalo sells their products on their website at blackbuffalo.com. It is available in both long cut and pouches if you're looking for something a little less messy, as well as nicotine-free versions called Zero. So like I said, if you're trying to wean off tobacco and nicotine products altogether, you should certainly check out the Zero products. They produce a variety of flavors like wintergreen, mint, straight, peach, and even blood orange, which is by far my favorite. They are born in the Midwest, raised in the South. Black Buffalo proudly manufactures their products here in the good old United States of America for adult U.S. consumers. They are proud supporters of the U.S. military, the veteran community, the first responder community, and that is why they're going to hook you guys up. They want you to head over to their website, blackbuffalo.com. You can use our promo code TNQ at checkout. They're going to give you 20% off your first order. That is promo code TNQ at checkout for 20% off your first order on blackbuffalo.com. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical intended 21 and older for current adult consumers of nicotine and or tobacco. May not be available in some states. Black blackbuffalo.com. Use code TNQ at checkout for 20% off. Right. Did you go to college? I you went to Boise, did, you went to Boise I, State. Yeah, I actually, so back to the Army, I actually got out after selections. Talk about when I said that, you know, I've quit a lot of things. Um, I went to selection and I actually was like, you know, guys, I think I'm going to go back to school. And I went to Boise State, played a year of hockey there because I did grow up playing hockey and football. And, um, you know, my dad wasn't pretty pleased with that. He's like, you fucking idiot. You just went through selection. And but anyway, went to school. It all worked out. He was happy. Um, and so I went to school for exercise science. But in saying that, did I graduate? No, the wars were kicking off. And I was like, I'm not going to fucking miss these yeah, wars. Yeah. So I got on the phone and went right back in the army. Uh, you know, have a little less than a year of school that I need to complete, but I mean. You do that online now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, I t- if I you want to, it, I'm saying. Yeah. I talk to all the kids, man, when they're coming up, if they're like out of high school, especially, it's like a military is a further on education, like an academy. Yeah. At, at that age, it teaches you your discipline, your study habits, and I've very seldom I run across anybody who's gone to college and then, or going to the military and then go back into school and I'm crushing. Yeah. I mean, this dude over here was just flowing through it. And undergrad <laughs> whipped our ass, dude. Ooh, yeah. We had yeah. way too much fun, right? Right, 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 yeah. Same thing, it's just it. So if you grow up in it, you, you kind of have an appreciation for it, but you can get lost. If you got a cool guy, dad, it's completely different, <laughs> right? I remember seeing the dismal walls of West Point. You're like, man, that'd be tough to even go in there. But once you yeah. get in there and see what's, I mean, it's only dismal on the outside. They do that for a reason because it's damn cool. Yeah. I mean, a lot of our history and traditions are really, really something. Yeah. And it's just a little four, it's a four-year academy, man, just to teach you discipline, uh, you know, how to sit straight and square up some sideburns and do whatnot, then yeah. go on some adventures. I mean, bro, 
we got to go on some freaking adventures. Yeah. Morgan and I talk about, like, we got to fight in Babylon, you know, in the mountains in Afghanistan. Like, they sent us everywhere. Yeah. Together. That's awesome. Right? So when you... So it's... I own a business. Mm-hmm. I know the challenges of kicking one of them things off and getting started. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still challenging. It's fun. Every day. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. networking the hell out of it. But where yeah. are you at right now with well, Alpha Elite? We are in year five and um Oh, that's dude, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not I've you know, I just had this conversation probably ten times this past week in in Jacksonville with a bunch of go ruck people. Uh awesome event that that uh Jason McCarthy put yeah, out yeah. there. The boy's good. And I think he's gonna change like you know, everybody loves CrossFit and all that stuff, but he took this thing called Savage Race CrossFit and Rucking and at the oh, end it's hybrid, right? Yeah. Super hybrid. But at the end of these he called them the Go Ruck Games. It was combatives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so you that took was, yeah, right? these people that are all about CrossFit and, and and hybrid type working out. But at the end, they had to fight. Yeah, and they loved it. And oh, you sure. can go look it up. But it was called Sandlot Jock Jacks, and it was uh, the dude is onto something. It's gonna people loved it. Not one person complained. Ah, oh. but uh, where am I? I mean, you know, we're at year five, and uh, it's still a struggle. I've been on kind of cruise control because. You know, have disability in retirement, and and you know that helps out the family a great deal with with you know medical and all that. It's slow growing. We're not doing anything. I'm not doing anything for fast growth. But we're we're making ripples, and you know we're, we're people are talking oh, bro, and asking man, us, hey, hey, I won't say any names, but hey, let's fly you and the wife up here, and let's you know discuss some things. We'll get a workout in, and so it's uh, things are happening for us. Uh, I feel like this year is going to be a, a decent year for us. So, but we're doing well. We're just under a million dollars in sales, and, and I'm happy. And that, with that whole slow oh, is smooth, smooth, smooth is fast. Yeah. What's that? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I mean, right. we, we learned about that. This whole thing that we built around here, like when we when you first step into it, man, they'll throw everything at you. Like yeah. And you can get burned up, and then it's it's right. a quick. But if you if you kind of pace yourself, like you know, just just like you've done it, yeah. five years is good. Usually two. Is when you find out, know, in yeah. business, it sure does have it sure does help when you get the big ones right up front. Yeah, it, it your growth rate is exponential, mm-hmm. and you're forced to learn. Because I'm the same way you were. I was kind of like just kicking along, kicking along. Yeah. And it was kind of doing one of these, and then I got a random phone walking out of here. Yeah, and there was a big one, and it just went. Yeah, see, I, but that kind of makes me nervous though right now, especially with the supply chain issues. Because my makers, they're here in Stafford, Texas, and they make for uh, their their own company. Glaxon is who they. They have their own product and, and they make my product as well. Different from what they make. We, you know, different formulators. But um, if, if something big like that were to happen, you know, I don't know that I'd be able to facilitate as much. If AFIs, you know, or the next said, hey, we want your pre-workout in, in, the, in every next. I wouldn't be able to facilitate that right now because of what's going on in, uh, are you, are in the market. Do you want to go that big? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think. And yeah, that's those are the kind of things that we're going to focus on after the supply chain oh, issues bro, you know start how, to dwindle. Well, you, the, the, the next shift in that is you redeveloping that. Yeah. Because we don't like relying, especially us. Yeah. Guys like us, we don't like to rely on the, on the outsiders. Right. When, when did they ever get packed? We ever get patched up with them when they were our supply chain or taking us somewhere? We didn't like that. Yeah. I mean, we got enough guys in that world already to look for something to do. Most of our guys are sitting around looking for something to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And we already know how to work together. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd love to, to fix the supply chain issues, at least for my industry. And I'd love to make my own products. And and I think that we could eventually someday get there. Um, that's a whole nother outfit, though. It's a whole nother business making your own product. But well, man, I, I went back into the farming. Like we went so far on the fighting side, we came back here. I'm farming now. Yeah. Tractor and, and cows and stuff. I, think I imagine all them guys. All of our guys. Challenging are, to vert- vertically integrate your company since. What's that? I think it'd be challenging to vert- vertically integrate a company like yours just because you were relying on the ingredients and stuff that aren't grown here. Yeah. I mean, I, so would you do that? Put one of our guys over there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you'd have to. Yeah, I don't. I, I haven't even really thought about it like that. <laughs> That's, That's what we're here for, bro. Right? No, sure. <laughs> no, it's but, not why we're but, here. But, you want like, a pen? Write that, this down. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I know that this is the year. I Texas A&M has a program for veterans. Um, it's a business entrepreneurial program that you have to apply for. Yeah. Um, it's through Syracuse. Uh, it's a five-week or six-week intensive program online at home, and then the last week is uh, at A&M. And yeah, man. for 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 entre- you have to be invited 
if you will. Bro, they just dropped a kick-ass road in between me and you to get to A&M in like in 30 minutes. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I was well, the one the that Aggie Expressway. Aggie yeah. Expressway. Awesome. They even label it for guys like us. Is that the one that goes to between Montgomery and Navasota? Yeah, it's yeah. right over here. Yeah, yeah. And like in 30 minutes, get over there to get that done. I'm taking a class this summer over for cows and whatnot. Nice. But um, it's, yeah, because. <laughs> no, you ain't. I already got signed up. I have to go. <laughs> I have to go. I have to go. Is it the beef cattle? <laughs> but there's there's some super challenges to owning a business. Um, but you know, like with with the ODA, uh, the detox in our in our sleep aid, um, both of those, the special warfare center schools uh, nutritionist got a hold of, and she absolutely loved them. Reduced lead levels and antimony in a guy in a Marsoc guy. Uh, the detox, the heavy metals detox did, and the sleep is just you take it once and you get see that. Ramps that's that's good to hear because a lot of people, I would say, the vast majority of people don't appreciate what heavy metals in the body will do to you and an even larger percentage of the military community especially spec war guys yeah. as much as we shoot yeah but they don't that they don't understand what that looks like inside yeah. of them i only say this because we had a we had a, an individual that was out of spec war community that was doing just some he wasn't acting according accordingly doing some things some nefarious things that yeah. he normally wouldn't do like, right so after he got out of jail he came to me and we started trying to figure things out and could not he's like i don't know why i'm doing this and he was being brutally I, and all yeah it looked like he was being brutally honest so we started testing everything and then when the team was like did we do a heavy metals test on this guy and we and when we did it was off the charts a bit off yeah. the charts and, and because of the certain metals that he had in him it, serious um effects on his behavior mm -hmm. yeah and we actually got we, we presented that to the courts yeah but awesome. it, how, what's in there to make you detox because I, I i thought it was just over time that the body pushed that stuff no, out no um depend it's it's and i hate to say scientifically dosed or clinically dosed or whatever it's just it's cilantro spirulina broken cell wall chlorella and some other things that help. And, and some people don't believe in congealing and expelling these heavy metals out of the body, but it, we did our own urine and blood tests. And, and that's exactly what particular amounts of these ingredients will do. There's some, there's, we've got like 50 some odd different ingredients in here, but it's those particular ones and a few others that, that help to congeal and expel. It tastes good? It tastes wonderful. That We gear all of our products on taste. I, if, if it tasted like wheatgrass, or the other shit that's in there, <laughs> I would not drink it. And, and so we taste tested a whole bunch of this stuff for the longest time and kept going until we got it right. The berry, I will say, is, is a little on the more lighter side of flavor, but we have a mango punch that's phenomenal. Uh, we just were, like I said, in, in uh, Jacksonville and sold all of that out, uh, the, the mango punch, because we, we taste tested them. It's funny because it looks like you marketed this thing around things that we get exposed to just to like as, as yeah, that, yeah. because you got the the heavy metals and then you got sleep sleep yep and we have a we have a hydration oral rehydration coming out uh in the next couple of weeks in stick packs it's called rally and recover so you know you can rally and party or rally point mm. and recover it oh, yeah it's funny how you know it changes as we get older oh yeah no points performance yeah Absolutely. what do you say who, who you partnered up with is you and your it's anybody from the teams or it's just me uh, I, I started this by myself i didn't no loans no investors none of that just deployment money and me Research and everything and what it is. A lot of talking on the phone, a lot of reading. Um, yeah. And then at one point I, you know, somebody asked me to, to, you know, run a stem cell nonprofit. And so I did that for a short time and that kind of opened the doors to some of these smarter people uh, that could help me with uh, talking about the effects of heavy metals on the brain and what it does and, and, and mental health. And so it, you know, it, uh, yeah. So basically just being exposed to other types of, of clinical trials and what kind of people as you were searching out yeah. the ingredients for this yeah it opens up opens up your mind and, yeah i spent time at the brain treatment center for for my own head which one uh in san diego and I, I used to live in coronado and and i went to one there at uh, san diego for eight weeks and it helped that i lived there because i had to go every day mm -hmm. uh but you know just getting educated there as well and going to exos talking to those people and Dude, i still go to exos i still go i just <laughs> yeah. I, every every year <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I, it's a thing now. Like, it's been yeah. a thing. It's been going since 2009. Yeah. Yeah. And those you guys, know, the brothers in uh, Sheffield brothers, uh, they, they're, they're with all Eagle. You know, they live right next to you, right? Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that they're bringing, they're trying to bring 
the uh, brain treatment machine itself here to Montgomery. They bought a building in downtown Montgomery. And uh, they want yes. that. And then uh, <laughs> and they asked me if we wanted to essentially do the physical therapy and stuff like that that Exos does. We're attached to a gym. Oh, y'all going to build one of those out here? I'm not. Because no, this place I, is growing like crazy. It's booming out there. It sure is. I couldn't but, even believe it when we get just when we got back how that the, the lake size grown up down there through 105. It's, yeah, it's it's maddening though. I mean, we got here in 2020 in September, and I was happy with how big the, the this community was. Oh man! No, but no, now no. it's it's ridiculous. But in saying that, I bought my house for you know a fair amount, and I bought the lot next door, and I'm happy I did that. Well, sure. We'll see what the housing market does, but it's worth a fuck ton more now. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so. you got into the marketing business just just in the nick of time. All of this, everybody, because I don't know how you came in, but he eats down those. You know, the back roads to the national forests. Also, That's where, yeah, really I, me. yeah. And those neighborhoods poking up in there. Yeah, they, the big ones. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's nice. But uh, but if you ever want to come work out with us, I built my own gym uh, in our facility. Oh, yeah, man, we rolled through there. I got buddies over there. What's Where's your facility at? In Summit one five six one eight Summit Park Drive. Uh, it's it's off of 1097 near the Grand Harbor neighborhood okay. area, but um, and I say the address, you can keep that on there because we have we just built out a front store as yep. well. Hey man, uh, how can people find you? Yeah, advertise yeah. it up, man. We're yeah. we're we're online alphaleeperformance.com, but we also just built a front store because so many people were coming to visit. And uh, so if you're going to 149, hang it right on 1097, head towards Willis. Yep, we're on the left. There's a shell station, yeah. gas station. Yeah, right to the and there's a storage unit. There's a storage unit on every corner in this state but yeah uh, there right. is bro yeah. uh, hey you want to learn how to make a lot of money are, man get some land throw right, them suckers on there you guys are right after the corner cross street from the shell station yep yeah yep right back there there's a gym back there called spring uh yeah spring fitness as well montgomery spring fitness montgomery but we are attached to them uh we have our own facility there and where all the products are at and built a gym you know and i drive know. through there how about the word got out yet i mean like really got at out you're back there man because that sucker will freaking start sl- like all our guys know that <laughs> We tell everybody we're ready oh, for we're it. Gonna. We're gonna. We're ready for it. We uh, yeah, we're, we, yeah, we're ready for it. We like, but don't do the yeah. Murph out there too, because that's a big thing. Was that the Murph challenge? Yeah. The, I do that during Memorial Day. Memorial Day, and, uh, <laughs> you know, people, people are always looking for places to do that. I'll I'll be honest, talking about I, those it's races. It's not a CrossFit gym. It's a gym, gym, right? Our gym. Yeah. Our, our well, it's our own personal gym. So okay. what's great is it's uh, I'm painting everything black because it's fucking purple. Uh, because Planet Fitness hooked wow. us up with, they get rid of their equipment every two years, and nobody goes to Planet Fitness and works out. I mean, you can't. If you drop something, you get in trouble. <laughs> so it's That's not where you go you there. To, you don't go there to work out, okay? I mean, I mean you go there commercial. for the free donuts and pizza that they give you. Come on, you man. On, what's you know, up? Have you seen that? Planet Fitness gives up. I've never been in one, but. <laughs> neither have I. Neither have I. I, I, anyway, I didn't know that. I was wondering about their shit every two years. Every, yeah, and, and so we have life. We have the Stairmaster, the. Uh, the treadmill, the life cycle treadmill, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's all legit commercialized product. And then I just put in rubber flooring and AstroTurf and Smurf Turf, like the it's blue. It looks like Boise State. State. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Um, but you guys come work out anytime you want. I would love that. It'd be great. And we have a we have a wall where we've had like Chad Prather, Scooter Brown, and and Has uh, Scooter's been there. Austin Haybar. Yeah, Scooter's. He actually, yeah, he, he stays at the house every now and then uh, when he's in town. I love that dude. But he was just you in got town a climbing for, wall out there. No, but need to do that too. We got. Fucking thirty foot. That's kind of clutch, man. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of hidden climbers out here. I'm, I'm putting a out, out on the side of the property a ninja obstacle course. Oh, I, mean, nice. I mean, I'm just taking those climbing pins and just snapping them into the trees. <laughs> Trying to hang some ropes from up there and stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah man. Be weedy, nightmare. Uh, I'm too. Yeah, I don't think shit, about though. it like that though. My very first ODA was a mountain team, and I they oh, called it, me a, a, a the billy goat because I could carry and I have thick legs, but I could not climb to save my life. Just like when I was on a scuba team for a short, short period, I couldn't do the 50 meter <laughs> underwater swim. swim. Even in Cornwall, really? we went there for dive recall. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. That's I was a thing. surface swimmer while everybody else was out having fun, and I was just practicing that 50 meter underwater. And I could, I'd I think it's a headshot. Yeah, man, every that sucks. single time. All right, guys, let's take a second to thank our sponsors and friends over at Human. As we age, the fatigue and lack of endurance we feel, we cannot always fix it. 
with more and more caffeine. That's the bottom line, all right? No extra cup of coffee, added shot of espresso necessarily is going to do the job. You're going to find out that you're just still weak. You're tired. You're having a hard day. You can't just get that little extra something you need. And there is a new way to start your day. That is Super Beats Heart Chews. They are a tasty treat. They give you the energy you need, and they are good for you. No more afternoon coffees, no more energy drinks and candy for a quick pick-me-up. You can add two delicious plant-based Super Beats heart shoes to your morning routine and promote heart-healthy energy for your day without that caffeine crash that you get. And Super Beats heart shoes unique, clinically researched grapeseed extract promote heart-healthy energy and normal blood pressure as part of a healthy lifestyle. When I got my last order of this product, my three-year-old niece, she knows exactly which ones are for her, all right? They have two options. They have one that gives you a little boost, a little extra caffeine, and they've got one that does not. And she loves them. She thinks that it's candy. We let her have one. I give her one every couple days. I know it's good for her. It's not bad like real candy for a little pick-me-up. And uh, her mom says, hey, I know it's okay for her. She can have it. I personally choose Super Beats Heart Health Chews for heart healthy energy. I think you guys should too. It's certainly a better alternative than some of the other candies you get at the convenience store. It is way better for your heart. It's way better for your blood pressure. For me, that's really important. I love candies. I have a sweet tooth for sure. And uh, for me, knowing that high blood pressure runs in the family, I don't want to take any risks. And that is why I use the Super Beats Heart Chews. The grapeseed extract used in Super Beats Heart Chews has been clinically shown to be two times as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. Do more for your heart and treat yourself with Super Beats Heart Chews. And for our listeners, you can get up to 45% off plus free shipping at superbeats.com slash TNQ. That is super B-E-E-T-S dot com slash TNQ. That is their best offer available anywhere. Remember when you support our sponsors, you're supporting us. And not only that, you're supporting your own heart health. Remember 45% off plus free shipping at superbeats, B-E-E-T-S dot com slash T and Q. And I was so disappointed because, you know, like PJs that are fucking scuba dudes too. And, you know, but. Dad bagging on you. It, it makes you feel any better. I almost passed out on the 50 meter, but I didn't. I made it. <laughs> Makes me feel a lot better because I did. Actually, it was really good. I just, then. I think I moved too much water or something. I just couldn't get it down. Right. You always big? Have you always been big? Yeah, I mean, I've been tall and I mean, I graduated high school. Can like, you run? I used to be able to, yes. Just talk about that. Because this sucker two. can run, man. I did a 602 uh, minute mile, uh, I don't know, when I was in my 30s. And now I'm 47. And well, now I have fake knees, so I, 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 I don't run. But, uh, Good for you. I don't either. I waddle. I f- and mountains kick my ass. You've probably heard it too, man. Like, I fall. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do well. Fucking so that. back to climbing, I, I don't want to build a climbing wall. or don't. Or, no. Fucking do it. <laughs> well, I didn't mean for you. I just meant for, I get it now. Because yeah. I, I can. This dude wants us to climb Everest when we turn 50. I'm climbing Everest. I wouldn't. All right. You want me to go? You wouldn't what? You would never go. You wouldn't want me to you what? You would never go. Want me to what? Watch your back? <laughs> you would never go. Beside that point. That sounds fun, actually. I mean, Everest Shut is up. cool. What, what about Denali, though? Are you, are you going to start off with Oh, yeah, we're else? starting small. Yeah. Not, uh, not to Kilimanjaro. Disc- not to disc- so I actually was this close climbing Kilimanjaro. I live Which in Africa. Which one's in C- Olympia? Is in Seattle, right? That's, uh, isn't that Mount Rainier? Rainier, excuse me. Yeah. Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Africa. <laughs> yeah. Rainier is good. Close. Different continents. Yeah. Yeah. I finally so. watched that 13 Peaks uh, Have you Netflix seen that, documentary. Uh-huh. Oh. Sure. 13 peaks watch it yeah, the last cool. one i saw was that dude who climbed without any ropes and i was on the edge of my seat yeah Al- fucking... alex uh, yeah, yeah we'll watch that too there's like, a new one there's, there's, a, there's a new one 13, 13 peaks, peaks. He, he, like, that, he, that's the grand slam of all the 28 plus i think it's 28 plus the record was 16 years he to did do it with he, and his, he and his boys did it seven months he had a crew with him <laughs> while his what? mom was like terminally ill right Bro, well, they documented it. Oh, it's good. No, I mean, no, like, get, when you get to the house, dude, turn it on. It's really good, actually. Wait, so he did it. There's 13, 26. That's the 20 grand, and above, yeah. 20, 28 and above. It's the grand slam of those peaks. Yeah. And. Is he still alive? How does he feel? He's a beast. Yeah, he's got to be. 14 I mean, peaks. That's what it is. 14. 14, 14 peaks. I double checked. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. 14. Sorry, not 30. Good Lord. Double checked here. We got it right that's a so sequ- he, that, that was a prequel. 13 he, peaks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> If you can't get through all, he was, a, he was a Gurkha soldier. You never believe he was a Gurkha soldier, and he's the first Gurkha soldier to ever be an SBS guy. The guy's intense, he's amazing. How big Gurkha. is his lung capacity, though? I mean, this, <laughs> wow. he's a Gurkha. He climbed Everest hungover. 
<laughs> pretty sure it was Everest. One of them, he was smashed drunk the night before and just. It's pretty that's intense. A, oh, wow. That's a gift. I will watch that. That yeah. That's I don't a, watch too much TV, but I watch documentaries. Watch. We stop. Yeah. We don't. We stop kind of watch TV too, man. Yeah. For whatever reason, I'll watch that for sure. Impressive dude. It's all we used to do when we was watching. There's yeah. nothing good on TV anymore. There's right not now. right. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. They redo all of our good shows and mess them up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Right. All, it's it's aggravating. Yeah. All the deployment movies. Yeah. Because that's all we used to do. Yeah. On deployments, man. I mean, that's why the movie quotes and lines. That's yes. Yeah. I mean, we all. That's our language. That's that's the military. That's the real military language that people don't anticipate. The Will Ferrell just, language. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that shit. Team yeah. America. You know, you just kind of throw all that on you, dude. Man. You so, just, how long you been married? Which time? Let's go current. Okay, current. Let's go uh, one you want to talk about. We are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on year five, going on year six. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like like most special operations guys or Green Berets, like I like to say, they're on their third marriage. And, yeah. You know, a couple Harley Davidsons and yeah. all that good shit. But uh, I got rid of two wives and two Harley Davidsons and met Emily uh, at the end of my career. So she wasn't exposed to right. the things that, that. There's a difference. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't exposed to me constantly wanting to be gone, constantly going on deployment and shit like that. So met her at the end. And, and, it's, uh, and now we're together 24-7. And I kid you not. Uh, we probably had a handful of arguments. Like I think I, I met the Is one. She local girl? Nope. She's Colorado Springs, okay. where I retired out of. So I just saw her trucking across the parking lot. Uh, my business that I started when I was active duty was next to her, where she was a real estate agent. And I saw her walking across the parking lot, and I knew her boss. And I was like, "Hey, did you hire a new girl?" And he's like, "Yeah, buddy, you should hit that." <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Roger that. We'll cut that out in case she's. Yeah. No, no, no. She know we tell that story all the time. Oh, okay. it's the <laughs> truth. And then, yeah, she confirmed that with him, and he's like, "Yeah, I said that." And she's like, "Oh, we went on a date." And so she's a ride or die chick. We married those two. Yeah. It's like, man, it, while you're in, it's different for us. Yeah. Uh, I tell her all the time, like, man, I don't know if you'd like me too much while I was in. I, I, I don't. Yeah. But getting them out, getting out and getting married, it's like uh, I call her the admiral. Because I can't talk back, you know, when she yells at me, <laughs> right. listen to what she do, gives me orders. But when you kind of looked at it like it was a new assignment, like a, yeah. like a teammate kind of deal. Yeah. What does she do? It's fun. Emily, <laughs> she works with me. Um, okay. She also, but she's still, she's a transaction coordinator for uh, a real estate company in Colorado Springs. So okay. whenever, she just knocks those out real quick, but works for me as well. And honestly, she she runs this business. She keeps it going. Sure. She, uh, yeah, yeah, she's, she's a boss, huh? Yeah. So she tells me what needs to be done. I would be lost if something happened to her. Well, I really would. <laughs> Finances and stuff, I've just kind of let her, she just takes it and goes with it. And she won't let me in the back to do stuff. Um, you know, we had one of our, a couple of our athletes out there in, in Florida this past weekend, and, and she was just directing. And I just stood around like, the fuck? I'm the owner, but nobody's talking to me. They're all telling me. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, she does, she does a great job. Everybody has a role. But, yeah. And, and no, no. If, uh, if my two ex-wives are listening right now, uh, you know, they're, they're good people, too. My boys, I have two boys. They live in Coronado with their mom. Down oh. in, uh, they're still on the island? Yep. Yeah, they are. And uh, she, that lady's a phenomenal mother. So, yeah. I love Coronado. Right. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I, I live there for three plane, years, San though. Diego, it's the only other place. Texas, yeah. man. I'm kind of like, hey. Yeah, if you, if you breathe in that air. That, man, that's, that beautiful. place is something, yeah. dude. We moved out to the island after I retired, and I was happy to be there. It was phenomenal, but just too expensive. Um, and then politically, I, I couldn't deal with it and bounce. I told my boys, I was like, they're old enough. They're 12 and 13, 13, 14, whatever. I said, hey, guys, I, you know, let's get out of Texas. And they're like, okay, Dad, we'll see you. And they, and they come out every month. And, but yeah, Cornell, That's the right? best of both worlds. You know, they get an island and, and to come to Texas. Oh, yeah. They wanted to move out here, but... That was a conversation. Didn't go over very well, but uh, they're going to remain in Coronado. I have no complaints. What's it like that. going to school in Coronado? Well, so we lucked out. I'm just curious. I always wanted to ask. They've been my... going to homeschool since right before COVID kicked off. We did that because my youngest was struggling in in uh, at the the Navy school down there on, on the Strand. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we put him in homeschool, and he excelled. He's now doing. He's like a almost a grade level uh, than where he should be above and. But the oldest is starting his freshman year, and he, he's he's pretty excited. But in saying that, I have a friend who moved here from Coronado to my neighborhood. She was on the school board out there, in uh, in on Coronado Island. Yeah, and uh, it, she was a, a pariah. Like they just went after her constantly because she's a conservative, 
and she was fighting for the rights for those children at the, at the schools there. Yeah. And uh, you, you can imagine what that sure. school district is like. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's San Diego or it's Sacramento based, if you will. Like they're telling that school district how to. Right. Yeah, so if that answers your question, I can't. Yeah, no, it does. I, I, I just, I'm just curious as an island life and how, cause you, there's a vibe there. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's, there's Islanders and then there's the military. We kind of coexist together. I was just curious yeah. as to what it was like to, if it's kind of like 90210 with, but just boom. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're just too young though to I can't answer that question other than just yeah, you know, yeah. what parents have told me no, about that school district. So I was just curious. I don't have to do with anything with Yeah. Yeah. But Hey Travis, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your nonprofit? I I started a nonprofit, Alpha Lee Performance Outdoors. Uh I it was tired of giving my money to the IRS and I thought, what better way? And at hunting and fishing and all that good stuff. Like what and I've been on these trips with other veterans and saw that fellowship that happens during and after and not so much for me i guess but but some of the dudes that needed that yeah and i was like how, how can i give back to this and so uh i started alpha leap performance outdoors in and taking soft guys uh on trips like that and our first big trip is uh to cabo june uh june 9th through the 13th what are y'all hunting down there eh? yeah we're, we're going red rum to red rum sport fishing yeah down you take there. them up north too to no oh. I was on a, I went to Alaska. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I went to Alaska, but that was with the Green Beret Foundation uh, and went up there and it was a last minute deal that I went on and and that was a good time. Oh, how can that be? Caught a big old king salmon. I mean, getting, <laughs> still waiting on that thing to be made. They're, you know how it takes a long time for taxidermists to yeah. do that rendering. It's it's not the actual fish. I brought like a hundred pounds worth of fish home. It weighed 57.6 pounds, king salmon. That's a good one. And uh, yeah. And uh, so a couple of our buddies had a uh, their pickup line. We go out to the bars was one was a taxidermist and one was a veterinarian. And uh-huh. their slogan was either way you get your pet back. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Corey and uh, yeah. Gary, Fatty Gary. and Barbara. Yeah. Dude, yeah. these guys are awesome to go out with, man. They had the best, that was one of the best pickup lines I've ever heard. But, uh, but yeah, that's the that's the nonprofit. Alpha Leap Forms Outdoors. Uh, we just literally just launched a website a couple weeks ago. Uh, have already had some awesome donations um, helping out with this trip to to cabo so where you got stand on there that i don't know uh my buddy from veterans outdoors they're out of georgetown texas uh, we, we partnered with them and they took care of the lodging but i know it's some condos just uh not too far from like that square where the, all the boats are at the yeah. downtown part yeah. yeah so uh not too far from there i'm not sure that's the best called. part about all, all of our guys have been doing a lot of stuff like we're starting to pull the shoelaces back together and tighten up the the strings, man, where everybody's, if you don't know something or get something done, all we got to do is make a phone call. Sure. Like one of our guys is in it. Right, yeah. Way, like, way in it. Yeah. And I, I, the, the longer we do this, man, I just keep seeing that more and more, and that's that's kind of a blessing. When we got, it's right when we got back, they separated us. They threw everybody out back into the States, and you kind of had to fend for yourself and yeah. figure out what you were really going to do. Right. And then, lo and behold, man, we kind of swing it back around to each other. <laughs> it was good stuff, man. I like What's it. What's next? What's next? Yeah. Oh, man. Ride Could, this out. You know, just to grow Alpha Lee Performance, uh, build that out. I would re- really like for this business to be a veteran-owned business. You know, like I want to hire a bunch of veterans. Um, they're DD-214s, especially guys coming out of like the infantry. You know, that, that, that DD-214 doesn't, you know, transfer into to much. If they're not going to go to school, come work for me. We'll... we'll uh, put you to work and then Here's hopefully like sales guys marketing guys and girls that i mean yeah i mean you know how you you assess somebody always assessing them right i mean it, we might get a dude that's just a nug and you're all you're going to be good for is is uh, logistics and packing boxes and, and getting that in a truck you know bro that's uh, the thing they love that you got I know. guys who love to drive yeah i mean they can't sit in the office <laughs> right. you put them in a truck man and they just haul at They're, yeah you got the recruiters They're, they need to be your salesman right because if you can get somebody to sign their life away like we do yeah come on man you i just met a gal she's uh she's a captain and she's her company command time is a recruiting office there in jacksonville awesome lady and uh, i was like man i would love to hire her because she's she's running a company i mean any officer who's run you know their command time think about what they have to do now, that's like yeah. a used car salesman yeah i mean they're awesome at that and, yeah uh, if you, look, if you step salesman. back and like plot the military on a whiteboard as, yeah. and put civilian titles over it, right. what they do, yeah, all the way down to the damn janitors, man. Yeah, you could build something because no one. Will, I mean, even if they complain, it doesn't matter because they still love to do it. It's true. That's like yeah. their. That's what their niche is. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty hilarious. That's why the military runs the way it does. 
because they can see that and they just stick them like where they need to go right but yeah that's next just keep growing this business and uh that's awesome and have fun doing it we're in no rush we're doing fine we're living comfortably uh yeah and just stay what rank were you we got out e7 Ten. yeah had a uh all that bullshit with getting hurt and stuff fucked up and then going to the rc i was in school for a year and a half for that program and uh when it came time to actually go take a team uh old lou palka i'll say his name that son of a bitch yeah great guy but he uh he said go take a team in, in germany for me and i was like nah i think i think i'm gonna drop my packet and uh to retire he stuck me in the basement uh -huh. son of a bitch and yeah. so that, that is uh, everyone know needs to know that there is a basement there is there is a basement <laughs> there is a basement There's but a, i will say it was that out. like being in there were tabbed up though that'd be crazy in the basement <laughs> i was down there with other tab dudes you know we were running shit Holy uh, you shit, know i mean funny. i was the s3 era i don't mean to be laughing at you no, no it's okay it's there. okay it actually it worked out because i did go to germany and, and and i rewrote it was like a punishment but it was great because i had to rewrite the air operations sop for 10th group and i went to the medic and, and got a bunch of adderall and just sat there and typed for months you know uh, because i was going to retire and i got that job done and and uh, out of nowhere a buddy of mine uh old warrant officer called me and said hey travis you've got some medical you know experience i kept my emt license current and stuff dude that was a huge and he's like and you're green beret and there's this band that needs a security manager with some medical background and uh i was like well, what's the band and uh he's like it's, it's a band called five finger death punch really yeah and i said who the fuck is five finger death punch and he's like are you fucking serious he's like you're gonna be perfect for this and i told so i told the sergeant major of the of the basement you know rolf jensen love that dude i was like rolf dude i just uh i was on terminal leave and uh, i told him said that you know chief so-and-so just called and said hey he wants me to go be the security manager for five finger death punch and rolf was just like what <laughs> are you fucking serious oh my so it's, like, it's my favorite band get the fuck out of here just call me. <laughs> call me every month just check in every month and had my replacement for the basement and i uh my, when i was in terminal leave i went and uh security man on three tours with five finger death punch how was that whole show we can do a whole show on that right yeah we sure can <laughs> uh i lasted three tours and and we had a a band meeting i think where were we hey, bless you that's those are tough deployments we were in milan italy i think come and on, uh come on, hear what this yeah, that's saying. right yeah yeah i, I said that's hey, that he, hidden special team no, go ahead. Let's get better. Yeah. oh yeah yeah i had a band meeting in the lobby of this beautiful hotel and you know it was a time that ivan was going through some a rough patch and he was the lead singer yeah uh and and we he went home and and tommy vex uh filled in for him uh and i was just like you know what i'm I apologize. I think I hurt some feelings because I said, this is so below anything that I've ever done in my life. And I, I don't think I'm going to come back. <laughs> and it was. I hated babysitting, you know, rock stars. Uh, Zoltan was great. But there were some things that uh, I had to sign in India that I can't talk about. It, it, it might. I think the statute of limitations has run out. But still, <laughs> it, there was just some things that you, just a guy who's had to take care of his buddies in combat, you know, and things like that. And then you're dealing with with uh fuck stars yeah and, and i just couldn't deal with it so i did a that european tour and and came home and yeah i i that was that was it for me We are supported by Truebill. You guys have heard me talk about Truebill before. It is one of the coolest apps on the planet. If you are tired of paying for your ex-girlfriend's Netflix bill, if you are tired of paying for subscriptions that you forgot that you signed up for years ago, then you gotta get Truebill. If you did not know this, the reason why free trials renew without your consent, it is because it is a business scam out to get you. You should not let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions today. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, you don't want, or probably you simply just forgot about them. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Maybe you've been thinking about buying some new fishing poles. Maybe you've been thinking about buying, um, I don't know, a set of golf clubs. Whatever it is, you could probably get that back just in subscriptions you forgot about because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill has made it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. Where Truebill really shines is with their Truebill concierge who is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. I use their concierge to help me get one of the uh, harder, I guess, subscriptions, one of those ones that was really hard to cancel taken care of. Got that money back. I 
Love Truebill. They save me money. You guys should definitely check them out too. Truebill has over 2 million users and they've helped save them over a hundred million dollars. Don't fall for subscription scams. But it was a learning experience. Uh, met some wonderful people that I'm still friends with. Um, you know, I still talk to Jeremy, the drummer, every now and then. He, he, he's not with the band anymore. Jason Hook, he's not with the band uh, with either. Um, Zoltan on occasion, you know, occasional facebook message or whatever but it was it was it was an experience and well, that's what life is man that's that, awesome dude shit. that's awesome met some great rock stars i mean you, rob zombie walks in and and now i'm not a fanboy by any means uh but you know when rob zombie who you, you know oh uh, yeah he walks in and, or uh i mean i'm a huge shinedown fan yeah. now because I, I didn't know who the fuck they were but now i you know i love shinedown their yes, music's yeah. great uh any of those bands that it was, we were that, you know, just over the top just awesome and then some of them, which one was just like you're like yeah civil like which band or or yeah artist whatever oh man you and know which I, one was like the worst my guy oh no, okay no. <laughs> i love you ivan i know you're sober now and, and, and i wish i was there for that but buddy dealing with with uh with drunk rock stars constantly puking wine all over i mean it was bad <laughs> and, and i had to drive him to rehab three different times and i it was horrible and almost killed him i almost killed you ivan if you're listening uh but he is he is we uh, love you though man love you he's sober now and, and and god bless because he would not be here if he didn't get sober finally but um but uh, i can't remember the lead singer to papa roach anyway that dude's phenomenal like that was, uh, jacoby jacoby yeah jacoby yeah, I was. We were overseas somewhere, and and somebody came. He's like, "Hey, the the Jacoby from Papa Roach." Uh, I didn't know if that was the singer or the drummer or whatever. I didn't know Jacoby, and but I knew Papa Roach. And he's like, he wants to meet you for some reason. I'm like me, like not Ivan, me. He's like, yeah, he, he just he wants to uh, he wants to meet Five Ring Dispun Death Punch Punch's security guy. And I went over there, and he just really was just uh, asking about you know because he heard I was a Green Beret and yeah. stuff like that and. Uh, but what a phenomenal stand-up dude like just a great guy not what you would think a rock star is but and then learning about him after that and and bringing his high school band into a music video to, that he did and, and telling that story about where he came from yeah the band you know you always make fun of those band geeks and shit yeah um but now look at him until they start playing for you right yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, we laugh about that too man everyone makes fun of him when you're in high school but like wow <laughs> yeah but Danzig, uh, you name it. I mean, you know, going on these European tours and you meet all these lunatics, and boy, do you see some shit. Sure, it's a big you party. See some shit. <laughs> I've seen more lines of powder. And I've, You're I've running a lot of our guys crazy. out there. Um, security deal, same thing. Oh, Taco. You guys know Taco? Yeah, everyone yeah. knows him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of guys everybody knows. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have. I can't remember all their names. That's good, but, man. But Dan's a good dude. And yeah, yeah. That's good so, stuff. Yeah. All right, you got to you got to leave us with one piece of never quit advice. You got a lot of experiences. I think you can uh, leave us with one. Yeah. You know, yeah, all those worlds clash together. That you, I mean, they're they're completely opposite. Yeah. Right. They really are. Yeah. It's it's funny how. It's funny how my life went. I mean, because I've I lost a son, uh, two wives. Lost uh, a son. I, when he was little, yeah. He, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. It's okay. It was years ago with my first wife. Uh, lost my father, who you know was my hero. Two wives. Uh, lost many buddies, like y'all. Two Harleys. <laughs> no, I didn't want to get emotional. Why'd you have to bring that up? <laughs> the the Harleys. Up, I know. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. So, but but something my father always used to say was, uh, he, he didn't care if I failed, or if I succeeded, as long as I tried. So that's uh, that's what I tell a lot of people today is that, you know, just just try. If if you fail, at least you can say that you tried. So, you know, but hopefully you succeed. That, that's I hope. Is that is that good enough for? Yeah. Is that on your bottle? No, no. Nope. It, it should, should be. be. Yeah. But that was my dad. He used to when I was at the academy uh, he, and he would spell out attitude in the corners of every letter. Because back then we didn't have email and shit. Mm. And he'd spell attitude. In, in in the letters of uh, in the corners of the letter that he emailed me so yeah so and that ought to be under the lid 
on top of Rowing. Yeah. Cool. Just try. You know, I that I don't know why I didn't think of that because normally I've just been thinking like stay alpha or alpha, you know, some something no, has great. to do with alpha. Yeah, man, you, your, dad, right your dad there. gave you the whole. He's been giving you the slogan the whole time, right? We'll take two yeah. percent off top. <laughs> Roger that. Hey, you're man. welcome. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do, man. Get those. Uh, I mean, we middle juice is flowing. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I heard that line clear, bro. That's yeah. that's pops for you right there. Yeah, he was he was a, he was a badass. So that son of a bitch went out like a champ too. Good he, for him. Was it good? It was impressive. It that's was awesome. It, he was in a hospital. He had he ended up getting MRSA Ooh, after Jesus. having he had lung cancer, prostate cancer, but they they took care of those surgeries. But he got MRSA in the hospital. And so he was on this Darth Vader machine because it uh, it affected his lungs, yeah. and, and they just shut down. Mercer attacks your body, you know how Mercer yeah, works. Yeah. And this dude was like, just have all my PJ buddies show up, and he waited for family and his PJ buddies to show up, and they all came. And when they were all there, this dude said, "Okay, I'm ready." And he couldn't breathe without that machine. And so they gave him some Versat or something like that, and took the machine off him. And and that's how he went with his brothers there and his family. He, Hardcore, he, man. He, I mean, he knew when to go. He knew when he was going to do it and said his prayers and said he was right with God and, and, uh, and went out when he, when he wanted. Shit, that's a warrior right there. Yeah, yeah. Patriarch of our family just passed away and went in his sleep. It's like, you don't ever get to do that, right? right. Next laying next to your lady? Yeah. He and I are going to fly a plane upside down through the barn and try and make Shit, it like second lines. lines. <laughs> We're going to try and get something like yeah. that. Anyway. <laughs> You want in on it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> we can at least be there to watch. Yeah. <laughs> we got too many guys. We'll just get a big bus to do the Thelma and Louise. There, there you go. <laughs> I'll jump on that. What's up, man? You know what I'm talking about? Like, we were that old. We're like, dude, we got to go epically. Yeah, right? This, this one girl, we were somewhere the other day, and she was talking about how her grandma had died, and they were all kind of bummed out about it. I was like, well, how'd she go? She's, like, She's in this plane. She was flying and crashed into the into a lake. Yeah. And I, my immediate response was like, that's awesome, dude. I mean, I How'd that happen? Like when she had this happen, this happened. I was like, man, when her when your family tells that story, dude, they're gonna tell my grandma flying a plane into the lake, dude. It was brilliant. <laughs> and she's like, I never thought about it like this. I was like, well, you should. You yeah, can sw- lay there moan, moan and matter. shit, man. Right? <laughs> right there, yeah, no, dude. Not, not down with that. It's happened a few times already. Yeah. Well, guys like us, like <laughs> throwing a hot rod. In the- yeah, right. You've been <laughs> drunk before. <laughs> this before, okay. Dude, yeah, Don't on purpose me. and by accident, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've been in those situations, right? Oh, fuck. Of time, so. Some of those iterations where you couldn't stop, so you, but you got a shit. Man, let her what's go. Up? <laughs> you guys know we have to share love anytime we can for our good friends over at Navy Federal Credit Union. They have been helping us put together this great podcast now for several years. We cannot do it without them. And when you hear the name Navy Federal Credit Union, you might think that that is just for members of the United States Navy. But in fact, Navy Federal Credit Union serves all branches of the armed forces. They even serve the families of service members and veterans of all branches. They are the experts in military finances and they empathize with members' lives. They go above and beyond to make sure they don't miss out on financial opportunities. I know that I have a lot of friends in my circle, my little brother, a lot of people have told me how incredible Navy Federal has been for them, how they go above and beyond, how they support them with everything that they need, whether it's buying a new car, buying a new house, they got you covered. And when it comes to buying a car, Navy Federal knows it's a big investment. And that is why they offer rates as low as 1.79% APR on new vehicles, along with the flexibility with monthly payments. And- all right, Travis, how, pe- how can people support you? Where can they buy your products? How can they support the nonprofit? All that good stuff. Um, so alpha leap performance.com, uh, you can, yeah, go to that website, alpha leap performance.com. If you want to say 15%, uh, use code elite 15 for anybody listening that will save you 15% off your entire order. And, uh, and then the nonprofit is alpha leap performance outdoors.com. And if you want to support, you can, that's, uh, really, that's just a, I'm doing that so that I can give my money to veterans and not have to give the IRS, but we'll take all the help that we can get. Cause I've got some great ideas. I got a skydive adventure trip that I want to do. It's not, it's more than hunting and fishing. It's going to. So the, are you putting together a, like a, that kind of a hunt? Like you have to die. You have to jump in. With I would your... like to do that too. Because yeah. we're, we're going to help you. No, fish. I never would jump out of the airplane again. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Bro. Really? Oh well, yeah. He, no, two hands are banged up, dude. No, yeah, no, we I mean, it. I'm big. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, yeah. All right. Well, I want to do it. Man, how wise get it? I ride a horse in. It's good. That's I'll what I'm talking about. Too. It's like jumping in and getting on the horseback, like the overnight hunts, building the fire. Yeah. Guys eat that. Our guys eat that shit up. Which can be done in Alaska. I've seen that. There's sure. some PJs that they 
they weren't going on a hunt, but they have the beaches have to go in and get those hunters that fuck up. Right, right. right. And they always free fall in. And instead of landing a helicopter, like, let's just jump in, you know? So they see him exit and I see one. You can actually give guys their jobs back. <laughs> yeah. But instead of us going in to hurt people, we're going, to, we're going solely to help them. Right? I guarantee you some, there's a lot of businessmen out there that would pay a lot of money to strap themselves, tandem, you know, with their gun to go in and hunt a moose or a bear or whatever. Right. You could put that shit Dude, together. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And there's a lot That's of people. one of those executive packages you Yeah. Just- the three of us walk in in suits to a board meeting and, and just kidnap them. Yeah, like the most dangerous game kind of deal. Like, <laughs> that would be cool. Like, don't tell anybody. Shit, if you tell man. anybody, we'll fucking kill you. Yeah. You're leaving your office right now and coming with us. They're just walking Is in there, throw that fucking parachute on him and throw his ass out the window. <laughs> 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 They're like, what's up now, punk? This is how this works. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, if your whole crew puts you into it, how are you going to get out of it? Right, yeah. And if we facilitate, I, we could we can just jump across the grid. Like enough of our guys are in enough spots to where we can. I, you know, in my in my last couple of months of doing the things that I've been doing, I've met some pretty well-to-do, high-level executives. Yeah. Which I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm gonna ask a couple of them like, hey, what about your C-suite? Should we do something like this? Well, you know, as crazy do- as our guys are, you know, there's that they would do. The, it's just sitting there waiting for us to do that. They're looking for shit to do. What did these businessmen do to go to space? They, they paid $55 million each to, to go, go... Barely in. Yeah, to go... Yeah, into... Man, we'll what, give you a ride like you won't forget. Yeah, to go to the SpaceX thing or whatever. Well, they went to the International Space Station, didn't they? Uh, I don't know. I thought they went just like into the first like, yeah, kind of layer. Like, no, no, they, they're the businessmen that just went to the space station. Oh, I didn't you know that. You can Google that. it. Yeah, they yeah. paid million $55 million dollars each to go. To the space station. They just did this. Like two or three of them. All right, guys, I'm in it with you. And so, what are we doing? they got uh, So does that take credibility there. away from the astronauts? They got stuck? For three extra days. Nice! Yeah. Three or four extra days, yeah. Well, you didn't see that? Then, That's how I learned about it, because they, they, they were talking about civilians, the first civilians to be in space, and they got stuck at the space station for for three yeah, extra like days. Shitty layover. Shit. I had a layover in, in space. Yeah. <laughs> layover in space. But it was 55 million bucks. Is mm-hmm. what they paid to do that. If you got that kind of fuck you money, man. <sighs> That's big time fuck Dude. you money. That's like Elon. He just bought Twitter today. It's a done deal. Oh, oh is it? it? Yeah. Oh shit. So we, we That's fuck you money. It's fifty four billion? Yeah. Around here we say, like, hey, once our billionaires started measuring their, their dicks by their rocket ships, not their yachts, we switched <laughs> to a different dimension. Like, right. We're in a different yeah. era. We're uh, we're on the we're, Yeah, we're on the we're on that glide slope right. for sure. <laughs> so that's done. Old Twitter is that go- that went down? It went down today. I'm excited. Yeah. So People speech, who lost their uh I'm gonna change gonna, a heart from them, right? I wonder what the first part uh, we got. Donald Trump, I guarantee you. He does that. And does he kick the board off? <laughs> I bet. He's bagging on that board so hard. Forty four billion dollars. I mean deal. The, the leader of the Taliban has a fucking yeah, Twitter I know, account. Right? Donald Trump right, come on, dude. It. That's wild. So I don't have one. I was kicked off of Twitter too, so I've never went back. Maybe they'll let you back. Nah, I don't care to go. I mean <laughs> I deal with this social media and it's it's a lot pain in the ass it mind fucks me so oh, people can forget how the american people are getting real tired of bullies quick you like you know sriracha sriracha sauce yeah right so the guy is a vietnamese he's he's chinese from vietnam and moved here created sriracha sauce in his kitchen and was just taking it to the vietnamese restaurants on his bicycle yeah and then it started to grow Obviously, the actual sriracha. The, the sriracha sauce. Okay. Um, it's in Cal- it's so sriracha sauce is made in America. Yeah. Always has been. Never ever came from anywhere overseas. So right. it's an American made product. Yeah. But if you look at the bottle, it's all in written yeah. in Vietnamese. Yeah. Um, the chicken. He was born year a year of the rooster. Okay. That's why it's on there. That's yeah. the only reason. He has one farm that produces all the peppers for him. And the farm's the only person that they sell to. Right, they do thirty tons of peppers a day. I think it's thirty tons of peppers a day. Where's this at? It's in California. Thirty and tons. Has never once ever marketed it. That's crazy. And he's like, when COVID hit, we started selling more. He's like, I, he's like, I don't need to sell. He's like. I don't know where it goes. The, the owner is still running it. He's like, I have had the same bottle for six months. He's like, I don't know where it goes. <laughs> no shit. Not, 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 same not marketed at one time. No it's a, it just it, it's hopefully like yours. It, it grabbed a cult following. You just yeah. gotta have it. 
Dude, yeah. that, that's something you just have to have yeah. in your in your deal. Yeah, it's like a, a dental floss for most people. Or beer it's salt sitting in there. Yeah, what that say? is funny. Beer I salt. Beer, yeah, we have sriracha, and I can't remember when we bought it. And we haven't bought one. It since. goes to the fridge. I think it came with. Yeah, it must. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? It comes with the fridge. Where the fuck this come from? Yeah. yeah. There's th- there's, he makes three different kinds. The, fa- the, the most famous one, obviously. All it is is chili peppers, garlic, mm-hmm. and those peppers. Huh. I, I, the only oh, sugar. I, I'm sorry, sugar. The only thing I know about sriracha is that didn't they like isn't it hard to live near that facility or something like that because it just Shit, reeps how, how could not be right? I doubt it. Sure. I don't know, yeah but i bet you couldn't mass produce some heavyweight peppers have you ever watched hot ones no oh that's the best dude hey man it'll make you piss yourself you need so to laugh. Laugh. like you're having a bum day yeah just just throw it on bro all right they, they really did a great job on interview how to get it do a, a proper interview <laughs> this is you and your buddy sitting across oh, hot the ones yes 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 yeah, yeah. eating the wings yeah the wings yes yeah i just watched one with uh josh brolin yeah great yeah, yes. I watched that the other day yes. too. Yes, where he's just like, you know, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just ready, he's ready. Yeah, 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 what's yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, did you have you guys seen that? Um, it's on Netflix, I think. If you have Netflix, uh, but it was like just weird sports and shit. Like you chase a wheel of cheese down a hill, but one of them was a pepper eating contest, and this guy in North Carolina has the ghost pepper and all that. But then he just cross breeds. Oh yeah, the reaper. Uh, yeah, Carolina. <laughs> but these yeah. people eat them like. It's nothing, uh-uh. and and they got to the end, hoping that one person would be standing. But there was like three or four of them, so they had to do the the chili off, you know, the overtime part of this. This and is they, on Netflix. Yeah, all right. It's something about uh, I'll I'll get I'll get it. Yeah, to go, you, uh, text me that when you. It's when fucking it. insane, but these people are just and it's a little gal that wins. She ends up winning. I and they start off with a jalapeno. I start crying when I eat a jalapeno, but uh, I get the built-in hiccups. I just yes. sweat. I did so we ghost pepper chip challenge. My son bought you did one. That? Yes, never again. I, uh-huh. buddy, we were the, me and the kids did it at the <clears throat> office. I started eating that shit and hiccuping, you know, and sweating and crying. And uh, my kid eats it too, but he's not hiccuping or anything like that. My my youngest son just licked it and he was done. Um, <laughs> but it fucked me up. Like I had to lay down on my stomach, salivation. I wanted to throw up so bad, but it was just salivation out the ass. And then I felt good, and got in the truck. We were going out to the property to shoot. And on the way there, fireball in my stomach again, round two hit. And I had to pull over, thought I was gonna shit my pants. Oh. Uh, yeah, but I didn't, I wanted Let's to. Let's do it. And then I thought I was gonna throw up again. I laid the bed of the truck down, uh, the tailgate. So you have and, to lay on your belly? Oh yeah, so I crawled up on there and just laying on my belly with my face just hanging over the edge, just salivating again <laughs> under the ground. <laughs> it was the worst like, experience just... of my life. And, and so, <laughs> so funny seeing that. I know, right? road 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 it was right off of, uh, I can't. It was yeah. It was not 1097. But anyway, it, yeah. It, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it looks. I look stupid. Like what the fuck is going with this guy? Uh, it was right off the side of the road, and I'm just hanging off the tailgate. And, and Emily is like taking pictures. But oh, also, oh, really? She's got some. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and and consoling me, and my kids are laughing. But I wasn't playing. That fucked me up. That chip. One chip. Dude. I bought it at Kroger's there in Montgomery. And, and I'll I, never do if, it again. if you're not aware what debilitating hiccups, they last for days like i would i mean and it's kind of i had to bend over i would punch myself and I'd try to lift that thing <laughs> okay, okay. you never had them that bad no i only get them when you hop food and they go away but that's the same thing with me uh, no we have for days for days Ooh. like so every now and again i'll, for I'll, days. I'll, I'll piss melanie off like stay with she'll try and kill me like she'll put some hot sauce in something and i don't know about it and i <laughs> she'll she's caging me she, she's trying to kill me well she knows it'll almost kill me <laughs> and as soon as it hits our mouth i can it's like getting kicked in the nuts it's like and the first hiccups like that, you know, and like woo, three days later, I mean, you just. Is it only certain types of peppers for you guys? Because I'll eat crawfish. That's pretty hot, what? relatively. Yeah. No, nah, that's yeah. that's a different kind that's of a hot. hot yeah, it's not. That's a spice. That's a spice. It's like spice. It's a spice. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that stuff is in, in the peppers, man. I'll send you on a journey. Yeah. I mean, taking it to the freaking spirit world, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this chip, dude. I'm not a shaman giving you guys jalapenos. I really thought I was in the poop myself. Shaq's on the OESPN. He goes, I'll eat this. I'm going to make a face. You ever seen that? No. Oh, dude. Have you who seen does? that? Who does? Shaq. Shaq. Uh-huh. He's like, this is nothing to me. Eats that chip, dude, and he's sitting there. And, I mean, 10 seconds into that. <laughs> the hot chip? Oh, God, dude. Huh? The hot chip? Or the hot chip, yeah. He, no. he did make a face? Is it- oh, buddy. Good. Yeah. Made more than that. What? <laughs> dude, dude, dude y'all need, that's hilarious, man. He's like, this is nothing to me. Just don't. Chewing it up. Got it. And it, I, I, I don't even know if it was 10 seconds. It wouldn't even have anything to do with being tough or not quitting. Like a never quit moment for me. Like, I just know. 
Like there's some things in life, man. It's like I just don't, I couldn't, I, just, yeah. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling all the, if, if this is being recorded, mm-hmm. I'm telling all the dads, don't fucking listen to your don't kids. Do not do it. Yeah, your kids will, they'll mess you up. He fucked me up. <laughs> and I really didn't think it was going to be that bad. I was like, how bad could this be? You know? Because we've been through some shit. Yeah, yeah. How bad? That that would have been something I would have, how bad? I mean, seriously, how, I mean, my lips on fire and nothing. I don't even say that phrase out loud. I've never done it. I never will. No, don't. And it's not even a <laughs> good taste. It's a weird, gross, hot taste that goes away on your mouth probably in, in five minutes, but it lasts in your stomach. <laughs> And it, I think it liquefied. Yeah, I shit my pants. So coming out later too. <laughs> That's awesome. Burn, burn on the yeah, south side. Like, like, dra- okay, I call that the dragon. It's like imagine, f- like from the movie where there's a dragon. It's like yeah, what, was it like 500 feet long when that fire blows? That, yeah. that can literally. My little wrinkle grommet was on fire. What's for up, the day, man? <laughs> That's where you do those. That's where you do that water sh- thing. Yeah, shoots in your head. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I was stood in the shower. Trust me, I knew, I've seen some buttholes in my days. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I was like, there's I spices in them little the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> Crevice, like sand. Shit just yeah. goes everywhere. Yeah. You yeah, pull that shack thing up on the. All right. Yeah, world's hottest kid, world's hottest chick. Yep. And I, and I think it's around, it's made like I, I put a real, like a regular chick on top of it. And you got some of that powder on it. Yeah, yeah, it's on the, and, uh, <laughs> it's just, it felt like I went to the dentist and my whole mouth is numb right now. This is incredible. What's it called? Don't ever do this at That's a Pacquiao chip. Pacquiao. Don't ever do this chip. It's the same thing. At least, at least all you got was some of the powder because Ooh. we were taping the Facebook uh, outside the NBA. Man, I just... <laughs> man, I'm getting the chills because I remember this feeling. It's got PTSD. Yes, it's bad, man. It's got PTSD. I don't get it. Whoa. And the I, fucking I, thing's I mean, $5. Dollars. I like, Chuck, I bet you $20 by the chip on his mega face. Man. <laughs> Without making a face. <laughs> 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 I know what you're turning on, man. Tell him, man. Omega five five. Till we die. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> 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 Oh, <laughs> 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 